So let's talk a little bit more about alternative routes and how to actually draw the profile for the alternative route. Now, this was what we did before. We drew a straight line from B to C, and that was our main route. And again, you don't have to do anything else because you can get two alternatives out of this. You can do a straight line and go, well, I can cut and fill to solve these problems with the gullies with water, or I can do bridges. That's two alternatives, and I can compare those alternatives, and that's sufficient. But your profile might not be the same, and you might need some other way to get an alternative in there. So I suggested on my other video about the, the end of the assignment that one option might be to go where it's a little bit less steep and where you avoid those gullies. So there's one option. Now, for me to do this, that's fine. I can measure the length quite easily. There's part of it, 4.2 plus 8.15 plus uh, 1.4, and I can add those up, and that's the length of my route. But how do I draw the profile? Let me just grab another piece of grid paper. Actually, I think I've got two pieces of grid paper. Give me a moment. All right. Because the problem is, however I draw it, and for this I'm almost certainly going to want to go this way, Remember when we were doing this one, I said you have to have that line of your road exactly perpendicular, all right, to the lines on the grid paper. It's a bit not quite straight on my video. Um, you've got to get that lined up right. But how can I do that when they're on three different angles? Let me show you what you can't do. You can't simply do this and draw down from here, from where they cross here, down from where they cross here. It's not going to work because this scale actually has to be this to match the horizontal scale. It can't be squashed up. So the solution to this is actually to cut the paper. Slice it there, slice it there, and arrange the pieces so they go down. I'll show you that in a moment because I want to show you one other option as well. The other option that is often easier is to follow a contour. Because if you are following one of these contour lines, the height of the road will not change. But if you do that, you have a curve. And in fact, you don't have to follow precisely. Suppose I went, I'm actually going to do something I never do, which is use a colour. Um, I always, always, always use a sharp pencil for this. But suppose you decided you wanted to go in a nice, smooth curve that looks like that. Well, how on earth am I going to draw a profile for that? And the answer is, get yourself a thin strip of paper. This is actually suggested on the task sheet. A thin strip of paper or a piece of string. Line it up along that line. And wherever, that li wherever it crosses one of the contours, make a mark on your piece of paper. Make a mark on your string. Everywhere one of those lines crosses. Make a thick mark for the thick ones. The challenge, of course, is you have to have heights on there, which is why, when I say a thin strip of paper, I'm talking about something like, let me show you, I'm talking about something like this, okay? Very thin strip of paper, because you can line that up exactly along there, and as you go, you can mark that one is 15, that one is 20. That one's 21, 22, 23. It's a bit slower and harder, but it will get you a very precise result. Make sure that your piece of paper follows that line all the way along, and you can mark all the contours, pull it off, mark the heights as you go, and you can measure that using your ruler to work out the length of your road. But you can also then use that at the top of the grid paper to make sure that the lines you're drawing are perpendicular to the way your road actually goes. Okay, sorry that went off the top. So you can draw it so that it's perpendicular and you know it's perpendicular. You can do this with string too. I've seen it done with string and with small bits of paper. Both methods work. To be honest, I would stick to straight lines. Let me show you what I mean 
to do the straight lines. Because all you have to do, all you have to do is go cut through exactly where the corner of your root is and exactly cut through where the corner of your root is and so this was my original map and I'm going to line it up so that, that piece goes there exactly along it that piece goes along there exactly along the grid the graph paper and that piece goes there in fact I'd probably cut this piece off as well to make sure I could line that line up exactly with the grid paper because then I have a straight line and all my my vertical lines I'm going to draw are coming off perpendicular to that line 